Hello and welcome to the World News Review on Independent Television Abuja. I'm Kiro Oguli. Security officials say a policeman was killed while trying to defuse a bomb outside a Coptic Christian church in Egypt. For this and more news on the foreign scene, let's join Gabriel Kuma. The device was one of the two hidden in a bag on the roof by the church in Nasser City outside Cairo. It comes two days before Egypt's Christians celebrate their Christmas. About 10% of Egypt's population are Copts, and many say the state discriminates against them and does not offer them enough protection. Egyptian President Abdul Fattah al-Sisi, who declares himself a defender of Christians against extremists, is due to open Cathedral of Nativity on Sunday outside the capital. The day before Coptic Christmas on 7 January, Last October, 17 people were sentenced to death for their involvement in a bomb attacks on Coptic churches. Officials say at least 30 people have been killed in the collapse of a gold mine in northeastern Afghanistan. The collapse occurred in the Kohestin district of Badakh's Shan province. Villagers had reportedly dug a 60 meter deep but makeshift shaft in a riverbed to hunt for gold and were caught in its collapse. Afghanistan has vast resources of minerals, but many of the mines are old and poorly maintained, creating severe safety issues. Villagers were reportedly using an excavator at the site when the mine collapsed. Officials say at least seven other people were injured. Theresa May has said the Commons vote on her Brexit deal will definitely go ahead next week as she vowed to redouble her efforts to win MPs round. She said that she would set out new measures on Northern Ireland and look at giving MPs more say in shaping negotiations over future trade relations. Warning of uncharted territory if MPs rejected the deal, she had declined to rule out holding more than one vote. But one Tory Brexiteer said support for a no D exit was hardening. The UK is due to leave the EU on 29 March 2019. MPs are expected to ask her to vote on either the 14th or 15th of January. US police have charged a man in connection with a drive-by shooting of a seven-year-old girl in Texas. Jermaine Burns was shot dead while in her family's car near Houston last month. Harris County Sheriff's Office said in a statement that Eric Black Jr., 20, has admitted involvement in the shooting and been charged with murder. Investigators believe the Black Investigators believe the attack on Jasmine's family could have been the result of mistaken identity. Jasmine's mother, La Portia Washington, was also shot and injured. Three other children were in the car at the time. A composite sketch of the suspect released last week showed a white male believed to be in his 30s or 40s. Campaigners had feared the shooting on an African-American family may have been racially motivated. A spokesman for the government of Gabon said the political situation in this country was under control following an attempted military coup. For this and more news on the foreign scene, let's join Charity Tanko. Guy Bertrand Mapangu told journalists that all five of the rebels who tried to take charge have now been arrested by the authorities. The junior officers claimed they seized power to restore democracy in oil-rich Gabon, where the alien leader's family has ruled for 50 years. Mr. Mapangu said that the army generals, civil society and opposition leaders mentioned in the rebel statement as potential supporters will be investigated. President Abdul Fattah al-Sisi has inaugurated Egypt's largest cathedral in the new administrative capital east of Cairo a day after a deadly bomb blast near a Coptic church. The newly built Cathedral of Nativity had its first mass under heavy security on Sunday, the eve of Coptic Christmas. On Saturday, a policeman died trying to defuse an explosive device hidden on a roof in Nasser City outside Cairo. Copts make up about 10% of Egypt's Muslim-majority population. Mr. Al-Sisi, who declares himself a defender of Christians against extremists, told worshippers the simultaneous opening of the cathedral and the major Al-Fatah Al-Alim Mosque carried a message of unity. 
Tuesday, following the reports of Monday's failed military coup in Gabon, President Mohamed Buhari of Nigeria called for respect for constitutional provisions in the oil-rich West Central African nation. His position was contained in a press statement issued by his senior special assistant on media and publicity, Malam Garbashehu. According to the statement, President Mohamed Buhari said the military officers in Gabon should understand that the era of military coups and governments in Africa and indeed worldwide is long gone. He explained that democracy is supreme, adding that the constitutional stipulations on the peaceful change of administration must be respected. President Buhari, who is also the ECOWAS chairman, urged military officers with political ambitions to resign or face their constitutional roles. He also enjoined the people of Gabon to remain on the side of peace, security, stability and democracy in their country. President Mohamed Buhari Tuesday also in Abuja called on African leaders to support processes that will ensure stronger political institutions across the continent, saying only strong political institutions will guarantee stability, peace and economic progress. Letters of credence from the ambassadors of the Republic of Guinea, Siaka Sizoko, at the presidential villa, President Mohamed Buhari said political reforms Receiving letters of credence from the ambassador of the Republic of Guinea, Siaka Sizoko, at the presidential villa Abuja, President Buhari said political reforms in African countries can only be sustainable when they reflect the will of the people and work towards improving their lives. President Buhari urged the ambassador to work towards improving the bilateral relations between both countries with focus on exchange of ideas and manpower for the exploration of mineral resources in Guinea. In his remarks, the ambassador of Guinea noted that President Alpha Conde is in full solidarity with President Buhari, who had been championing reforms in ECOWAS and the African Union. Receiving letters of credence from the High Commissioner of the Republic of Kenya to Nigeria, Dr. Wilfred Gizuka Machadi, President Buhari said he was happy with the political maturity that trailed the conclusion of the elections in that country. Matadi assured President Buhari that he will pursue all the details of discussion and agreements between both countries, especially on promotion of agriculture. President Buhari congratulated the ambassador of Poland to Nigeria, Joanna Magdalena Tarnowska, while receiving her letters of credence. He urged her to work towards improving the close ties between both countries. In her remarks, the ambassador of Poland noted that she will prioritize on improving relations, particularly on trade and commerce and defense and security. Meanwhile, Mozambique's former finance minister, Manuel Chang, has appeared in a court in South Africa's capital, Pretoria, for a hearing over a U.S. extradition request over alleged fraud. Let's join Adeze Uti for this and more news on the quarantine. He was arrested as part of an operation targeting individuals accused of involvement in a $2 billion fraud connected to firms in Mozambique. He would challenge the lawfulness of his arrest as police had not received a formal extradition request. Some Mozambicans gathered outside the court in Pretoria to support his extradition. Reports from China says 20 primary school students in Benji have been injured in an attack at their school by an unidentified man. The attack took place at about 11 o'clock local time. The three children were reported to be seriously injured but stable. The alleged attacker has been arrested. It is not clear what motive the suspect might have had. According to reports, the attack which took place at the Benji No. 1 affiliated elementary school of Zhuangwen Normal School was carried out with a hammer. Time for a short break now. When we return, the World News Review continues. Please stay with us. Independent television is live 24 hours on Gold TV, Channel 107, Star Times, Channel 130. And now you can watch from any part of the world on Roku TV, Smart TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Android TV for your favorite programs, news, current affairs, and lots more. You don't want to miss our objective and balanced reportage, entertainment, and sports. Now follow us via our social media channels on Twitter at ITV Radio NG. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash ITV Radio. 
Radio NG. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash ITV Radio NG. Visit our website for more news stories and lots more. ITV Radio Nigeria.com. Watch ITV via live streaming on the internet. ITV Radio Nigeria.com forward slash live and click on the TV stream option. Also remember to visit your mobile app store and download the ITV app so you can watch on the go. Independent television, certainly the best. Hey, welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the World News Review on Independent Television Abuja. So other reports, officials in Egypt said that an ancient Egyptian artifact illegally smuggled out of the country has been returned after being displayed at an auction hall in London. Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities said that it was retrieved following searches of international auction websites. It is not clear how or when the relic, the cartouche of King Amenhotep I, was originally smuggled out of the country. Egypt has stepped up efforts to stop the trafficking of its antiquities in recent years. The country has warned that it will not cooperate with foreign museums in relation to exhibits on ancient Egyptian sites unless smuggled artifacts are returned. The large block of fine white limestone will be on public view for the first time since it arrived in Scotland in the year 1872. US President Donald Trump has made his first television address to the nation from the Oval Office escalating a standoff with Congress that has led to an 18-day partial government shutdown. Mr. Trump insisted on funding for his long-promised U.S.-Mexico border. However, he did not declare an emergency that will enable him to bypass the lower house of Congress, now controlled by the opposition Democrats. In an eight-minute address Tuesday, Mr. Trump said the federal government remained shut because of the Democrats. Mr. Trump correctly pointed out that the Democrats have in the past supported a fiscal barrier. An Australian government says the Saudi woman who fled her family and refused to leave a Bangkok hotel has been declared a legitimate tragedy by the United Nations. Rahaf Mohammed Al Kunun 18 refused to board a flight from Bangkok to Kuwait on Monday and barricaded herself into her airport hotel room. The United Nations Refugee Agency had referred her case to Australia for possible resettlement. In a brief statement, Australia's Department of Home Affairs said it will consider the referral in the usual way. Now that Ms. Mohammed al Kunun has been given this status, another country must agree to take her in. However, officials in Australia have hinted her request will be accepted. Norwegian police have now confirmed that the wife of a Norwegian multi-millionaire businessman has been missing for months after being abducted. Anne Elizabeth Falkovic Hagen, 68, disappeared from her home near Oslo on the 31st of October 2018. Norwegian media reports said that the kidnappers have demanded £9 million. It said Mrs. Hagen appeared to be, have been abducted from the bathroom of her home and that there had been limited dialogue with the alert kidnappers on the internet. In a statement, police said they had made the decision to make the case public despite threats from the kidnappers in order to appeal for more information. The police statement said the main hypothesis has always been that the woman was abducted against her will and that extensive forensic work has been carried out at the home. Meanwhile, opposition presidential candidate Martin Fayulu warned election officials in the country not to disguise the truth as tension mounted over the delayed results as at Wednesday. For this and more news, let's join Blessing Umaru. The Democratic Republic of Congo opposition presidential candidate Martin Fayulu has warned election officials not to disguise the truth as tensions mount over the delayed result. Mr. Fayulu said the Congolese people are already known the results of the vote which took place on the 30th of December 2018. The poll is to establish a successor to Joseph Kabila who is stepping down after 18 years as president. The head of the Electoral Commission, Cornelia Nagar, earlier said the results from a number of polling stations still need to be counted. 
saying in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the results were declared by the electoral officials and opposition candidate Felix Shisekedi declared winner of presidential elections. For this and more news, let's join Blessing tomorrow. Electoral officials say the opposition candidate Felix Shisekedi has won DR Congo's presidential election. The announcement made overnight sparked accusations of an electoral coup from runner-up Martin Fayulu. The ruling party, whose candidate finished third, has not yet contested the result, sparking accusations of a power-sharing deal with Mr. Shi Sekedi. It is an accusation Mr. Shi Sekedi's team denies. A spokesman for Mr. Shadari, who has been Mr. Kabila's hand-picked candidate, accepted the defeat saying the Congolese poor people have chosen and democracy has triumphed. A drone attack on a Yemeni government base by rebel Houthi movement has reportedly killed at least six soldiers and injured several senior officials. A video showed a drone exploding above a podium where the officials were watching a military parade. A Houthi-run TV channel said the rebels had targeted personnel from the Saudi-led coalition backing the government. However, a Houthi military source told the UN Security Council that substantial progress was needed before more peace talks could be had on ending the civil war. According to the UN, at least 6,800 civilians have been killed and 10,700 injured in the fighting. And up next is the foreign news reports from Friday. Martin Fayulu told the BBC the people of the nation deserve to know the truth of the election which he said had led to a coup. Another opposition candidate, Felix Isekedi, was declared the winner and admit accusations of a power-sharing deal with the outgoing president. Several deaths and injuries have been reported in the wake of the results. The result, if confirmed, would create the first orderly transfer of power since independence from Belgium in 1960. A court in Yama has rejected an appeal by two reporters jailed for a state secret act. Walon and Kwanso O oh were sentenced to seven years in September in a case condemned around the world. They exposed the summary execution of 10 Muslim Rohiyas by the security forces during the military anti rohia operation in 2017. The judge called the attempt suitable punishment and said the defense had not proved their innocence. Both men have been in prison for more than a year. U.S. President Donald Trump has renewed a threat to declare a national emergency to fund the construction of a war on the Mexican border. A row with Democrats over funding the wall has left the government partially shut down for 20 days, leaving some 800,000 federal employees unpaid. Mr. Trump says the wall, a key campaign pledge, is needed to tackle a security crisis of illegal immigration. Analysts say the national emergency move will provide political cover to reopen government while allowing Mr. Trump to argue he has done all he can to fulfill his campaign promise. That's the size of our package. Many thanks for watching. I'm Ichiro Obuli.